and welcome to our conversation with Tim Love, who's going to talk to us about the analytics journey at Burger King UK. Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. No, thank you very much for inviting me. I would love to start with, talk a little bit about your role at Burger King UK and, mm -hmm. and start to talk about kind of like what you do uh, with respect to the day-to-day -day experience at BK UK. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm the digital director at Burger King UK. It's quite interesting listening to the keynote this morning because I sit within marketing. Um, so. <laughs> Obviously, over the last couple of days, met so many people from um, from growth teams, product teams, engineering, and not loads of marketeers. But as uh, as Justin said, like the fifteen percent of the top users of the platform are in marketing, and and I think that's because the customer is always at the heart of what a marketeer is thinking about. So my job really is to make sure that. Our customers can access Burger King easily, fast, quick, through uh, digital products, um, mostly focused around our app, which is where a lot of them are, um, and yeah, make life easy for them. Would love to start with your analytics journey. Where did you start at BKUK um, in terms of how you thought about analytics? Uh, we, we started at rock bottom because um, despite the fact that Burger King is a brand that's been around for such a, such a long time, we at BK UK, uh, who are the master franchisee for the for the business in in the UK, mm -hmm. obviously, um, <laughs> did not have anything in place. So when we took the business on, we had an app product, we had kiosks in restaurants. Right. We knew absolutely nothing of the usage of those platforms beyond somebody has activated an offer and they've used it in store. There was nothing more than that, and so. You know, with this role sitting within marketing, reporting to a CMO, obviously our desire was to understand much more about who those customers were, why they were using our digital products in the first place, and actually how we could make their experience much better. Um, so we um, joined up with RBI, who are the brand owners uh, internationally, um, to look at what they were doing, first and foremost, to try and help ourselves get to a better place faster. So they were very early adopters of Amplitude, um, and we decided to go into a tech partnership with them, whereby we used their, uh, their app products and, and other bits and pieces as well. We took on the same CRM stack that they did, which they um, delivered a lot of success with and, and campaigns that people still talk about, such as Wapadita, which I've already heard a few times today. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we tried to get ourselves into a position where we could accelerate what we knew about our customers and actually use those insights uh, faster than if we'd tr been trying to do it ourselves from complete scratch. So you're kind of starting a complete scratch. You're thinking about your analytics journey. Mm. What were some of the initial use cases for the team at Burger King UK? Yeah, so like I said, we, we really didn't know anything apart from the fact that we had um, a value for money platform predominantly with the app, which is what the business was interested in right. at that time because that's where we could actually see people were coming in because of it. Um, but quite quickly, kind of, we wanted to understand much more. We very much had a kind of one size fits all for that group of customers who predominantly we discovered um, are obviously seeking value for money. They're seeking to understand uh, where we are and they're seeking to order. What we're trying to do is very simple. Like we're trying to make their lives easier. Um, so it took time to kind of gather um, data on them and what they what they wanted. But some of the really kind of interesting use cases that we had with Amplitude were around dietary preferences and how we might take that data to actually uh, give them a different uh, give them a different service. So to use an example. Um, I don't know how big plant-based vegan products are here in the US, but it's a massive trend in the UK. And what we found was that there are a lot of people who were uh, giving an indication via use of our platforms that they had an interest in plant-based or vegan products or that um, there was potential for them to be interested in them. So we created that cohort of customers very simply split them a bit, sent them into braids, and started offering them different content to what we were offering to uh, everyone else, which was predominantly beef-based beef -based chicken products. And what we found was that those customers who were interested in using our products and looking for things suddenly were actually then coming into restaurant and doing something. Um, so it was a real eye-opener for us um, that that interest was there, I suppose, in the first place, but also 
very interesting case for the business as a whole because what's interesting as a marketeer is the fact that for me to kind of sell a platform like Amplitude or other software like this, you really need to prove that it is bringing customers into restaurant right. in a different way to how others might. And so right. to be able to tell that story to you know the, the powers that be within the business about how we discovered these customers and then their actual value and potential long-term value for us was, was an eye-opener for everyone, I think. Um, you and I talked a lot about kind of your discoveries around um, <clears throat> how plant-based and vegan products have kind of changed the market for you in BK yeah. UK. Um, so I love how you kind of were able to understand that perspective from Amplitude. Mm -hmm. In that same vein, you kind of talked about how you started from scratch. Mm -hmm. Now you've gotten a couple use cases. You've made insights. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about how you're thinking forward with respect to your data transformation at, at Burger King. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing that's changed for us um, is even just rewinding a couple of years is, is how... These, this group of customers gets talked about within the business. And that's because we're able to illustrate through what we see in Amplitude and beyond that actually this group of customers is worth a lot of money to us. <laughs> Quite simply, that's a very crass way to say it. But they are. Um, their lifetime value to the business is much higher. And so to kind of give another example of, of where they're intrinsically discussed within the business now is we uh, do a campaign annually called Whopper Day, which is you get a free Whopper, so it's not the most original thing in the world. But look, <laughs> the way that that might have happened uh, previously as a marketing department would be we would say, Okay, like we want to do this today because it's going to create brand affinity. People are going to come back in if they have a good experience, etc. And I believe those things, but you couldn't prove it. Right. And so now we're in a position to really tell the business, look, we should do this. And we've done it a couple of times before because we will be able to then see what these customers do. We'll be able to influence their next decision as to whether they come back in or not. We will be able to try different techniques to try them get to get them back into restaurant. So I think that that's where the biggest shift has been for us. It's been that... The, the data and the way that we use it has allowed us to frame the software and but frame the customer differently to the business directly, and that's very powerful. And how do you, you're talking a lot about, as you're kind of thinking about some of your marketing campaigns, now you have data around it to kind mm. of understand it. How are you sharing those insights back to the business? Um, as simply as possible, depending on who the audience <laughs> is, yeah. So I do, I do think, um, again, sitting within marketing, perhaps offering a different perspective on it, you know, what we want to be able to show is that through uh, our product and through the way that we communicate with these customers based on their actions, that we're able to influence them. So very much where we've gone from a kind of, yeah, one size fits all in terms of the offers that we give to people, the content right. that we share to something, something quite different. And as you're kind of thinking about, and we've talked a lot about kind of how you've been able to understand your user base, gain insights, and build kind of marketing campaigns around that. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking about data and kind of the insights you're gleaning from the data to influence product strategy and, and working maybe with the product team? At the yeah, end? so it's quite interesting how I work with um, um, our product team because, as I said, we we uh, they're based they are in RBI, so I they're actually part of BK UK, so I work very closely with them. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we actually have, um, to go back to some of the slides that we've seen over the past, um, over this morning, you know, we do have a situation where the three teams are converging together. Right. Right. Um, and we could do it much better, to be perfectly honest with you. But we all have access to the same information. We all have access to not only the, the customer uh, campaign data, but we also have access to the product data. And so for me, I kind of straddle both areas. So. Um, to give an example of um, something that was uh, fairly recent, we actually had, um, we, it looked as though, and um, we discovered we did, have an issue in terms of customers getting to check out. So a lot, of people, a lot of customers were dropping off at sign up stage, which we could obviously see within um, Amplitude data. So a customer would start the process of ordering, they would get to actually having to sign in or sign up and then drop off. So we changed it and experimented with getting them to at the absolute end of the process before asking them to do that, right. um, which made a big difference in terms of conversion. So lots of different um, experiments and tests that we do, um, largely, like I said, driven by the teams working together. So often it will be a case of the product team suggesting that we do something uh, mm -hmm. to me, and a lot of the time I'll say, well, yeah, that makes complete sense, right. or I will see something within the platform uh, and suggest that we, we do something with it. So it's very collaborative. Um, um, but yeah, there's an awful lot of things, a lot, a lot more we could try that I'm sure we will. Let's stay in that theme a little bit. How about some of the other non-business facing teams, maybe like engineering? Mm -hmm. How are those conversations going and kind of what, a, when 
you have kind of, we're talking about the convergence of all these teams coming together. Mm -hmm. um, how's maybe some of the partnership with, partnerships going with some of the other non-business facing teams? Yeah, I actually think that the most interesting one uh, for me that's developed quite significantly over the last six, six months or so is actually with our uh, finance team mm -hmm. and our head of finance. So obviously, you know, that somebody like that and, and their team is constantly going into trading meetings, reporting right. on, Sales, literally top line. This is what's happened this week. What you know? What what's next? Now those meetings are starting to get different because they're taking a big interest in actually the customer and what we are seeing within the platform. So to go back to my example of Whopper Day, when that is reported by finance internally in trading meetings, it won't just be a case of we gave away this many Whoppers and that's it. It will be a case of this is what happened on the day, but actually, you know, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks later, this is what we're seeing. Um, and I think it's their interest in getting into the platform that is most in, like most interesting to me because typically it's kind of been difficult to get that sort of engagement. So right. obviously, yeah, finance is there. I think to go back to uh, more of the themes that have been discussed today around marketeers, um, the platform is definitely accessible for marketing people to use as it is. Um, I have a couple of people on my team who regularly look at, to be fair, like fairly top line metrics, but right. by just getting into the platform and starting to use it, they start to see what else is available. So I think that's one of the things that I want to work with Amplitude on um, over the coming year is making sure that we make it as accessible as possible and make sure that that onboarding process is as strong as it can be. Um, so yeah, I think there's definitely been a shift in the business in that respect. And, and I think what's been ex exciting, and you and I talked about this yesterday, and, and we're kind of talking about it now, is like you have gone from nothing to now you have a, a solid approach and foundation mm -hmm. to have data-driven decision-making. How are you enabling maybe new um, teams to your ecosystem or new employees to your ecosystem? What does kind of like enablement of this new process look like for you guys at Burger King? For them to start using the platform. Yeah, and, and, making, and getting uh, insights quickly. Yeah, so we're actually in a process of re-evaluating our structure, to be honest, uh, mm -hmm. because the way that we're set up means that, uh, I'd be interested in talking to other people about this um, after the session, just around setup uh, for data analysts, specifically to be right. in to look at this information right. that we're getting and suggest what we might be able to do. Because the way that we are at the moment um, is quite, it's, it's a little bit hand-to-mouth. So we do have, obviously myself, we have a couple of people in my team, we have our product team engineering, but it is kind of like there's not somebody whose job it is necessarily specifically just to assess the data that's within the platform. Right. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing at the moment. Um, it's kind of embedding amplitude across lots of different areas, albeit like one by one. Um, but I think it's something that we need to have a, have a good think about for sure. The macro environment is changing mm -hmm. and would love to hear some of the things that you guys are thinking about at Burger King UK around as you know, the environment is changing, as the pandemic is a, is a global phenomenon right now. Would love to hear like some of the things that you guys are thinking about that as the market moves, you guys are doing to adjust and adjust quickly. Yeah, I mean, very broadly speaking, like our business changed incredibly quickly as it did with many other industries over a very, very short period of time. So really good example of that is delivery. Home delivery was not a huge part of our business uh, prior to 2020. And then it suddenly became a massive part of our business. And so you had a shift from um, being able to kind of serve delivery drivers and, and the customers ordering through that platform relatively easily because the volume wasn't there right. to suddenly being in a situation where our kitchens, which were often built an awfully long time ago, were not ready for a massive influx of delivery drivers, um, a massive influx of people kind of waiting to get food before they could take it away again, and you know, massively increased use of aggregator platforms within, within the UK. So for us, coming out of the pandemic, touch wood, there's no wood here, which is worrying. Hopefully coming out of it long term, it's for us to think about how might that change again? How set are those consumer right. uh, patterns that we've seen develop over the past couple of years? Um, and what happens next? Does everything stay as it is now? Or do people start to kind of retreat back to, back to where we were? And, you know, there are so many factors layered into that. You know, massive cost of living crisis. Um, right. You know, so many uncertain things uh, and for us it's sort of I'm trying to get to a point as quickly as we can to understand what shifts may be longer term than short term you know 
in that vein, and you know, we talked a lot about how your organizational has gone through some, your organization at BKUK has gone through some change. We're talking about how the customer is experiencing change in the mm -hmm. way that they interact with you. How are you helping other teams at BKUK stay close to the customer mm -hmm. and, and get that perspective? Yeah, I think it's trying to tell stories which are understandable uh, in a I lot like of that. ways. So I, like I think that. if you give um, the uh, the vegan one is such an easy thing for people to understand in terms of right. This is a group of customers who are looking for something different to what we're offering everyone else. So we need to treat them differently. And then you start to broaden that out more. We know that this group of customers typically comes between these times. We know that this group of customers typically spends this much. And so it's starting to understand those groups as best we can, trying to understand who the target group, um, like what's the lowest hanging fruit, to be quite honest, yeah. and then to tell that to the business and help them to understand. So it has to fit into your broader um, audience segmentation and who you're going after for definite. Um, but yeah, it's trying to layer, layer those stories into the bigger picture, I think. So um, I think you make a great point as you're starting to think about your audiences, your cohorts mm -hmm. that you're creating and thinking about how that's driving your strategy moving forward. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking about marketing towards different audiences, you know, what is, you talked a little bit earlier about your partnership with Braze. Yeah. Would love to hear how you're kind of thinking about that aspect of the customer experience to yeah. drive value. Yeah, I think it's it's trying to, I think the, the biggest um, legwork to do is to really understand kind of what those groups are. So obviously, we can identify hundreds and hundreds of people who are, or hundreds and hundreds of groups are doing things quite, uh, right. groups of people who are doing things quite differently, but you're not then necessarily going to get the biggest ROI and all the time that you would spend identifying them. So I think it's trying to um, work to identify those clusters, yeah. make sure that they're big enough to kind of make it worthwhile and then test and test and test and test again. Um, so there are really easy examples of where, you know, we've been, um, slow to do stuff. So uh, something that we should have done way before we actually ended up doing it was just, you know, firstly, authenticated customers versus non-authenticated customers. How do we change those? Right. How do we change the content that non-authenticated see compared to authenticated? Super simple, makes a big difference. So it's trying to find more of those types of examples. Um, and then as you go on, you get more and more sophisticated in what you're doing. You use um, a product like Recommend, which is not something that we've gone massively in depth on yet, but is quite exciting because it takes a bit of that legwork out of what you're doing. It's a, you touched on a good thing that also came out from the conversation that Spencer had with Pat Grady this morning around simplicity, right? Like mm. these simple things that you're gleaning from your data yeah. You know, can be a massive impact in terms yeah. of how you think about your product and your experience. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know, we're not... We don't have to pretend like we're an overly complex business. People, it's very clear from what we see what customers want from us and want from our platforms. Right. Make it easy for them to buy food. It's that simple. Right. So everything <laughs> that we should do should layer, to, layer onto that. And if we can make it slightly easier by recommending a product that we think that they're going to like uh, based on previous behavior, brilliant. But it should never, we should never overcomplicate things in terms of what the customer actual, actual customer experience is, in my opinion. Talk um, in that same vein. Talk about some of the trends you're seeing in your industry. What are some of the competitors doing, and what do you see going on from an industry perspective for you guys right now? Yeah, I think QSR is an unbelievably competitive environment to be in. Um, obviously, there are incredibly well-known brands um, within this space, and I think that QSR generally, if you, um, I don't know how much attention anyone pays to it, but. It's, I would say it's fairly advanced in terms of use of um, tech generally. Yeah. It's been, and the, the pandemic has seriously accelerated that. So you're now finding that a lot of restaurants, uh, new restaurants that are being built are very much digital first compared to ones that came before. So if you walk into many QSR within the UK, you'll find that actually, and, and here I'm sure, but you'll find that there's no front counter. It's just loads and loads of kiosks where you are able to log in as a known customer to right. uh, get an advantage over somebody who's not. So I think it's trying to keep up with those expectations. And I think that obviously, every brand is going to come at it from a different perspective because right. the technology that you have within restaurant is either going to seriously enable that or if it's going to potentially hold you back. Um, so it's trying to, trying to play, with, play with a lot of big, uh, yeah, big players in that game. Yeah, and, and I think it's exciting to hear how you guys are experimenting with different ways to mm. you know, make the customer experience exciting and, and mm. you know, delivering a product that customers want. Yeah, definitely. Um, as, as you kind of think about now in terms of like where you're at, what's one or two things with respect to your amplitude experience that you feel are going well? 
It's going well. Um, so yeah, I think that we are have, have been fairly successful so far on, in terms of audience cohorting and mm -hmm. how we then talk to those customers through uh, um, the platform, but also through uh, SMS, through email, through uh, in-app messaging. That's been a fairly successful uh, thing for us so far. I think as well, like uh, again, it might be unique to us in terms of the way that we're set up, but. I think that I am, uh, and a couple of people in my team are fairly good at holding the product team to account in terms of what right. we see happening within the platform. So if we identify something as, hang on, that this doesn't look quite right, obviously we don't necessarily have the technical expertise to then dig into it, right. but we are able to talk to the right people who do. And obviously it's incredibly collaborative. Um, so to give a kind of really recent example, we noticed that um, within, we'd had a fairly big drop in conversion right at uh, checkout. And this was not easy to identify. Right. We saw it in Amplitude, we were like, hang on, something's happening here, like, what is it? Mm -hmm. And so we had to work really closely with our product and engineering team to try and establish what it was. And what it was, was that we had in a number of restaurants, incredibly old Windows software operating, uh, which was meaning that the uh, price to come back to the customer was taking about 20 seconds. So over that time, they were just like, well, I'm not gonna bother with this. Like, the only way that we were able to see that was because of amplitude. So I think that we're quite good at sort of identifying issues and mm -hmm. then escalating them in the right way and working with the right teams to, to solve them. What's one or two things that you think Amplitude could be doing better? I'm just gonna slag you off in front of all these people. <laughs> um, you guys are offering more and more and more products and you're offering more, uh, not more, more and more features. Yeah. And so, depending on the size of the teams that you work with, that might be easy for a team to implement, or they might be able to take it, just run away with it, do it themselves, or it might be a case of actually, we really need you to kind of guide us here and actually work with us to tell us sort of how you think we could do this better, right. uh, or how this feature is really going to make a difference to you because we can see X, Y, and Z of right. in terms of what you're doing now. So I think that as you grow the platform and as you offer more and more and more features, the need for that is going to become greater. Um, because in the end, smaller teams, mid-sized teams are going to look at this and be intimidated by all the different things that they can do. And I think that the best use of the platform is like identifying the things that will make the biggest difference to you as a customer. Um, and I think that Amplitude can really help to identify those things. So it's that close collaboration. When you think about your customer, and we've talked a lot about how you've been able to gain insights, mm -hmm. what's next for the Burger King customer in the UK? What are you guys thinking about in terms of your roadmap moving forward? Yeah, so certainly, like I said, to build on build on where I've been, like the um, presentation of very, very relevant content is massive. The presentation of... Um, relevant offers as well. And we're launching loyalty, which is a massive thing for us right. um, in July. So again, like we're slightly playing catch up there. And I know I've been to a lot of QSR here. Basically everyone has a loyalty platform, but right. it's new for us. The challenge um, that we have uh, is that we do have a very fractured uh, franchisee estate. So you do have restaurants which have capabilities that others don't. So I think for us, it's gonna be making sure that we tie that up as, as much as possible. So if we see customers who are having trouble accessing loyalty for whatever for whatever yeah. reason, we'll be able to identify them within the platform and hopefully give them a better experience after and, and not just kind of ignore the fact that that's happened to them. Right. Um, so I think that that's kind of, yeah, uh, the biggest thing coming up for us is, is that main trying to have that consistency of experience as much as possible, which is so critical in QSR. When you think about what keeps you up at night as a marketer in QSR, is it conversion? Is it new users to the platform? Like, what is the one thing that you're really trying to solve for the most? Um, so I think the thing that keeps me up is the things that I don't have much control over. So to that point around about our franchisee estate, you know, everyone obviously working bloody hard to make everything perfect, to make everything completely consistent across our restaurants. But there's only so much that we can do to help that. Um, but like it's not worth worrying about things that you necessarily don't aren't able to control so like i said the, the key thing for me is making sure that we are ultimately delivering on the vision that we have which is to make it fast and easy for a customer to get a whopper their way and there are lots of things in our disposal that we can do that and can help that with so uh we have time for one last question so i'm gonna come at you with the heavy hitter what's your favorite thing on the menu <laughs> i was, was heart beating i was like 50 seconds can i just muddle my way through that um 
Uh, bacon Double XL, which is the most popular, um, most popular item at the, in the UK. I need to go to Burger King while I'm here, but it's so hard to walk anywhere here that uh, <laughs> there is one which is only supposedly like a mile away, but I think it will take me about an hour to get there. Um, but yeah, I think hands down Bacon Double XL. What about yourself? Let's see what oh, you do. Oh, Whopper everything. No, easy no questions asked. Easy, easy answer, yeah. <laughs> um, Gang, please join me in thanking Tim for the conversation today. Tim, thanks. It was really, really Thank you. fun. Thank you. Thanks.